Hello everybody, yeah, I can't sing. Hi guys, so, um, a lot has changed. And I'm not just talking about the fact that I am now married. Uh, no, the world kind of collapsed around us and I kind of feel like, just a lot has changed. <laughs> but, hello everybody. I hope you are doing so well during this time um, in life in general, in all ways. We are doing good. I know some people have reached out to us. Thank you so much. We made it back from our honeymoon okay. We got back into the US. Um, we are being quarantined. Hello, it is the voice from the future. <laughs> so as you probably can tell, this video was filmed about halfway through my quarantine. So that's why all of a sudden I am being quarantined again, but um, it's not real. I'm not actually being quarantined again. It just, I filmed this back in March. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, bye. <laughs> As you are. I think we have one more week to go and I am vlogging again. So excited about that. Um, specifically doing a special quarantine edition vlog. So that's fun. <laughs> but yes, we made it back from our wedding um, and honeymoon and we just made the cut. We consider ourselves very, very lucky. Not that that's a huge priority right now with everything going on, but it's just, I feel terrible for brides who now are having to postpone or cancel their wedding. And we just missed that. Like if our wedding had been the next week, I think we would have been looking at a very different situation. So yeah. And we also both are now working completely remotely. Well, my job more easily lets me do that. His has been a more of a challenge to work remotely. He is a scientist, for those who don't know. He does research, and he assists um, graduate students with their research. And since colleges are shut down and his lab is shut down, he has a very different work schedule now. But anyways, that's not what this video is about. This intro is already too long. I'm so sorry. But I know that this video is a little bit different from what I normally do. I am not a booktube channel, but I do follow, well, okay, I mostly just follow one booktuber, <laughs> Insane Reader, who's now Caleb Joseph. He's so funny. But it inspired me. I was kind of thinking, just because there were so many books that I brought on my honeymoon and that I read on my honeymoon and I bought on my honeymoon, I thought I would do a fun, like, book haul, book review, what I read, what I got honeymoon edition especially with what's going on right now i feel like I don't know, what better time is there to read and write so yeah i don't think i will do a whole lot of book videos just so you know just because i am not a book reviewer i <laughs> my opinion i think doesn't mean a whole lot just because i mostly just enjoy like commercial books like fun books to read i'm not really a literary book reader so which you're about to find out Anyway, and something I post about Instagram that I love to do when I travel, or really kind of anything in life, like lately I love to read books that relate to where I'm going or what I'm doing. And so, for example, when we were like leading up to our wedding, I got this book and started reading this book because I had wedding in it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like oh, I'm getting married. Like I wanna read a book about a wedding. <laughs> and then, you know, we were going to France. So I got this one and Scotland, so I got this one. So to start off, I guess I will just talk about um, what books I brought on my honeymoon and didn't read. So, one book I brought and I had just held it up. The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I don't know if I'm saying her last name correctly. I read this book, or I got this book at Barnes & Noble like a month ago because on Goodreads I had seen it was popular in like the romance section this year. Uh, a lot of people seemed to really enjoy it. and. I did I'm like halfway through. I didn't actually end up reading it at all during our honeymoon because I had started to read it before and I've been trying to like it. I don't know if I'm just not like a romance reader. That could very well be. Zach's outside. Did I mention how fun it is to be quarantined with your new husband for like three months? <laughs> no. It is definitely extended honeymoon, but it's like, oh my gosh. Just us two, three months, baby. Luckily I like him, so it's going well, but we got a small apartment, man. If it's not my neighbor, it's my husband. Maybe that's the reason I don't like it. It's like, 
I mean, I've read books that have romance in it, but I haven't read like a romance book in a really long time or maybe ever. I don't know if I've ever read a romance book, but I just did not, I do not like it. Oh, I feel bad saying that because there are certain elements in the book that are really good. Um, like she handles sort of like workplace racism, social racism, like really delicately and it's really well done. It's uh, the premise is there's these, this girl who is visiting her sister or something. I don't even know. And um, <laughs> I'm the best book reviewer. And she meets this guy in an elevator who is on his way to a wedding and the wedding happens to be his ex-girlfriend and he is the best man in the wedding. And so it's really like, intense that way I guess I don't know but I just knew that it was gonna go downhill for me when I was reading the opening scene and I was convinced it was a dream sequence because it was so corny and just like exaggeratedly written that's not a word but it, no it wasn't a dream sequence it was the actual scene and uh, I just it was not good from there <laughs> I guess it's just like I keep waiting for something to actually happen that's not just how they feel about each other but i'm realizing maybe that's just romance maybe i just don't like romance because it's like that's just not enough for me to carry me through even if it is hot and spicy just yeah i'm just not feeling it i'm, I'm gonna finish it i am it's a curse i have to finish a book i cannot just not finish it but it's gonna take a while i can tell so yeah, I did not end up reading this on the honeymoon. I thought I would, but I did bring it. So fun added weight. <laughs> New battery. Hello. I don't know why I'm saying everything. I just, it's starting to annoy me. No, it's not. I'm so funny. Okay. <laughs> the other books that I brought were, and okay. I've talked about the fact that I'm reading these books before and I'm hesitant sort of to talk about them only because I recognize they're not great. <laughs> I read them a lot. There's like 50 in the series. They think they just had their 50th and I've read like 30 something. Um, and I'm nervous for you to like say how much I read them because I'm afraid you guys or one of you is gonna read it and like realize how bad it is and be like, oh my God, does she actually think this is a good book? Is this how she writes? Oh my God. And then they like, you think I'm a bad writer, but it's just, they're so cozy and I love the TV show. And I feel like the author does a great job encompassing the character of Jessica Fletcher and so it's like reading extra episodes of the show so I just I don't, I'm really insecure about reading these books just because I know they're not like literary masterpieces but anyway I am addicted to them so I brought two murder she wrote books um, and one is Province to Die For, it takes place in Province, France. And the other one is The Highland Fling Murders and it takes place in Wick, Scotland. And I read both of these. I devoured them because like I said, I have a weird obsession with them even though they're not that great. Like if you want my Goodreads, you'll see I like, some of them I give like four and five stars and that means I really like it. Three stars for me means I did not really like it but that I didn't think it was necessarily awful. Two stars means I thought it was awful. One star means it should not have been published. Um, <laughs> I brought these and it's just so fun because the author you can tell really likes to go to the places that he is writing about. He does a lot of like location books and he like just puts in little nuggets about those places. It's kind of like if you've played Nancy Drew video games where they put in just sort of educational bits about the town or the place or the country that you're visiting. And so it just makes you feel like you're there. And I really like that. Um, even though it has nothing to do with the plot, like no relation. <laughs> I thought I wouldn't like this one just cause it's about a place in France that I didn't end up going to and never really my kids, I can't say I never plan on going, but, um, and it's about cooking, which like, I mean, I cook, but I, I don't know. It just didn't sound that interesting, but I actually really like this one. I ended up giving it four stars. Um, and I even like, I pressed rose petals that were in our hotel room in it. And I think that's really cute. And then this one I was so excited about. It was about a haunted house in Scotland. Sounds so fun. And I did not really like it. I think I gave it three stars, which again, to me, that means I did not like it. It just like, it was one of his earlier ones. And like, so like it says it's written by Jessica Fletcher, that's fictional. Um, and then Donald Bain is the actual author. Um, his earlier books in the series are especially not good. <laughs> like I, some are okay, but some of them are like actually bad. 
Whereas the later, like he definitely sort of finds his groove in the later books. I feel like it's kind of the opposite of a lot of series where like you love the first one and then they get worse. His actually got better. So I kind of knew going in that it, the fact that it was an earlier book, I probably would have some issues with it. And I did. Um, it just was like kind of unbelievable to the extreme in a lot of ways. Like the characters, multiple deaths in the town happen and the characters are just kind of like are just like, well, we have to keep on with our vacation. It's just kind of weird. I don't know. And like the character Jessica Fletcher isn't really herself as much. I don't know. It's pointless to talk about if you don't care about the show or the series. But yeah, I just wanted to share. I was kind of disappointed with this one. So those are the books I actually read. So now as far as the books I bought. Oh, and technically I did start reading this one as well. Sorry. I got confused. So this one I bought when I was in Scotland because I thought it was very fitting. I bought this when I was in Glasgow. I, it's a pretty well-known series at this point, Outlander. It's also a TV show, which I have not seen, but I've heard a lot of really good things about it. I don't know if it's YA. I think technically it is not. I think it's just adult fantasy, maybe um, new adult. I'm not really sure, but it is a romance but it's also fantasy and i think there's time travel involved i just started so i do not know much about it if you couldn't read it it's outlander by diana gabaldon and it was about honeymooning in the scottish highlands which is exactly what we we're doing so i thought that was extra fitting but funny story about this so we before we went and got the book in glasgow we were staying at the isle of sky in scotland or on the isle of sky it's in like an island up in the scottish highlands and we were like you know up there it's pretty remote so at night there's not really much to do um and so we're like you know what we should do we should watch like start watching outlander like it takes place in scotland like it might be fun to watch while we're up there we also started watching the crown when we stayed in london so like i said i'm really into like scene setting and like watching and movies and tv shows about where i am but anyway so we went on netflix and we found outlander and we hit play <laughs> And it opened up with there was this guy like in a space shuttle and he crashes onto planet Earth and he comes out and it's clear he's like traveled through time. And all I knew about Outlander was that it involved time travel and that it was in Scotland. So I was like, yeah, this is it. And about 20 minutes in, I just was like kind of confused because like there they had not introduced any sort of like romance feel and i was like wow they really kind of missed the mark with the vibe of this because usually how a movie starts is at least it has the tone of whatever you're about to watch is and i'm like the tone of this is really off for the opening but maybe they're trying to get more male viewers i don't really know i was just kind of confused so then i went on wikipedia like about 20 minutes in and like read the synopsis for episode one just to see like where it was headed what was going on and it was like the synopsis was like claire is like a 1940s like army person i'm like what like who's claire we were watching some weird sci-fi movie instead <laughs> called outlander as well uh yeah we stopped watching it we thought about kept watching it but then we we're just like no like i was in the mood to watch the tv show outlander but anyway that was just a really funny incident and uh, I'm glad I checked or else I would have been really confused. <laughs> so I did just start reading it like literally like a couple pages on the plane when I was like decided to watch a movie instead but I'm very excited to read this. I think this is going to be my next read once I'm done reading um, the books I have to read for my classes. Speaking of which, one book we got was... <gasps> The Illustrated Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone edition. I'm really excited about this because we actually got this at King's Cross Station, which is on the cover. Even though I technically I think it's supposed to be Hogsmeade on the cover, I don't think it's supposed to be King's Cross, but we're gonna pretend it's King's Cross. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm having trouble filming this. But so we got this book at King's Cross in London. So it's a train station, a real train station. And for those of you, you know, the two of you left on this planet who haven't read the Harry Potter series, um, he gets to Hogwarts, or the students get to Hogwarts by going through King's Cross station, platform nine and three quarters. So I went to platform nine and three quarters, like in King's Cross, they have a really cute, like, 
near where platform nine is they have this like little setup into a wall and you can take pictures like and it says platform nine and three quarters and it's super cute um and so when i studied abroad in london five years ago four years ago um no six years ago wow when I was there six years ago, we went to King's Cross and I bought the original like Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone hardback, which had King's Cross Station on it. I think it said Platform and Three Quarters on it. Uh, and I loved that I had that special version because I mean, I have my own Harry Potter books, but obviously they're Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And it was just special to have it from that actual space, like that actual place where it was based on. I lost it. I'm smiling, but I'm devastated. I lost the book. I'm pretty sure I know what happened to it. I think one of my roommates thought it was theirs and I haven't really reached out about it just cause it's just one of those things I keep forgetting to reach out about um, to see. And plus at this point, it's like been so long. Like I don't even know like if they would have it anymore, but I thought no big deal. Cause like I knew I wanted to go back one day and um, when we were going for the honeymoon, I was so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna get to go and I can buy the book again. Well, they have new Harry Potter covers now and I don't like them at all. Like I know like in order to keep a book fresh, you know, you do new covers and like print new editions, but I really just do not like the new covers and they definitely don't have like King's Cross Station on the cover of it, which is kind of the whole point of why I wanted it. Um, and so I was really like no joke so upset in a very irrational way when we went to the shop next to that the platform nine thing quarters at king's cross they have like a harry potter store and I, we went in and they didn't have it anymore and i i just was really upset because like to me that was just going to be a perfect solution of like losing my book that was so precious to me i was just going to buy a new one like on my honeymoon um and the fact that they didn't have it anymore with the cover of king's cross i was just really disappointed and so but then i was like we ended up going back because we had to go back in order to get to Paris and I was like gonna give it another chance. I'm like, okay, Haley, you ruined like a really good like shopping opportunity or whatever. Like I let it get to me. Um, so I went back in and I realized that the illustrated edition has the cover and so, or has like a similar-ish cover of him at like a train station. So I ended up getting this and it's actually, I'm so glad I did because I had never really looked at it before. I had heard that they made illustrated editions of the first few. I don't know if they did all of them, but guys, they're so good. Like, it's like a, a children's, I mean, it is a children's book, but just like the fact that they have like illustrated pictures, I don't know, I love it. And so I bought this on my honeymoon and I did start reading it as well because this is one of the books that I'm studying for my class. So I'm gonna be able to actually read the original philosopher's stone edition of the book for it and i'm really excited about that no i almost found a page another book that we got while we were there was this because it was so funny we got this in paris at the catacombs um there's like a gift shop about it and it has nothing to do with the catacombs and it's english it's the nightmare before christmas which is one of zach's favorite movies um, and it's just, it's like the story of the night before Christmas, but it's like changed to be like Jack Skeleton and like Nightmare Before Christmas version. And we just thought it was so cute. Obviously it's like a children's book again, but, um, that was just something we bought. So check my Goodreads. I'll rate it soon. <laughs> Another book we got, and these are a joke. Okay. Because I know that they can be offensive. <laughs> well, they are offensive. Um, if you were to take them literally. These were written in 1913 and they're guides. We got this, where did we get this? We got this in Scotland and Edinburgh at the castle. Um, and they are do's and don'ts of being a good husband and wife, or they're all don'ts, that's right. Don'ts for wives, don'ts for husbands. It was a guide written in 1913, so it is like a real, like it was a real guide. It is so funny. Like, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I've just started going through it. Like this one, don't vegetate as you grow older if you happen to live in the country. Some women are like cows, but there is really no need to stagnate. Keep both brain and body on the move. I mean, it's offensively written, but it's not a bad tip. <laughs> don't try to model your husband on some other woman's husband. Let him be himself and make the best of him. Again, poor choice of, um, like, as if we have a choice of modeling our husband on someone else but a good sentiment oh this is a good one don't interpret too literally the obey of the marriage service your husband has no right to control your individuality yeah so <laughs> i want to read all of these and like 
it was just something really cute we saw in the gift shop so we bought them and that's it there you go my first well actually it's not my first booktube video i've done book reviews before but more of like a my first book haul video and uh, i hope it wasn't too lame <laughs> i feel like i don't know what i'm talking about i didn't really like review anything but i don't know i just kind of want to talk about what books i got what books are on the horizon um I guess books that I will be reading obviously so I'm reading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone I'm reading for my class I'm rereading Twilight which I actually ran not that long ago I'm still oh that was the other book oh I forgot to show it Percy Jackson um, and the Lightning Thief was another book I brought to read on my honeymoon just because I'm reading it for my class but I ended up not reading any of it is that true yeah it's true I just want to make sure I'm telling the truth <laughs> because I did have a homework assignment due but I was able to just use reading I had already done for the essay I had to write. So those three books are on the most immediate horizon and then I think I'm going to try and read Outlander and try to finish this bad boy but I don't like it. If you've read any of these books let me know what you think especially Outlander. I'm very curious about this one. Like I said I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, so I'm excited to see if I like fall in love with it. I was saying to Zach, this is going to sound really sad. Um, I haven't like fallen head over heels, bleh, head over heels in love with a book series or even just a book, I guess, in a really long time. Like, you know, and I hope it's not just because I'm getting older. Cause I think back to high school, like when I was reading Harry Potter and the Hunger Games and Twilight and just like all of those like really big popular series. Um, I became so obsessed with the characters and like, I just wanted to live in their world. And that's something I talked about actually in my um, assignment. We had to talk about, we had to like look into other resources on why blah 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 boring boring homework stuff but basically to look into other resources sort of about the um, thesis that we were going to talk about and mine was what makes those books so compelling especially the opening what hooks the reader and um one of the things talked just about how like especially harry potter and twilight they created a world that you just want to live in like you just want to fall into it and just be like know the characters and like not even like be the main character but just be in that world and that's something that i want to do for my own writing as well like i would love for people to think that way about the worlds that i create and just i haven't felt that way in a new way in a really long time like when i reread my favorites thankfully that feeling does come back so it's not like i don't get to experience it again but no book has really done that to me in a very long time and I'm trying to find that again. So if you have books that lately especially have done that for you, like new reads, not just nostalgic reads, but just reads that books, they don't have to be new books per se, but just books that you've read recently that have done that, let me know. Like maybe it will be Outlander for me, but I don't know. I hope I find it. I'd love to like experience that in a new way. And because Percy Jackson, I haven't actually read that series before. Uh, that's kind of like a new series to me but it is middle grade and so I don't know how much I'm going to feel that same pull that I would have felt if I had read it for the first time when I was middle grade aged. So there you have it. So on the theme of books let me know what you guys are reading now. Like so like I said let me know if you've read those books. Let me know if you've read books that have given you that feeling but also like in general what are you guys reading? what's going on for writing books i'm reading the anatomy of story and i wanted to read all of the elements of style even though it's more of a guidebook but i'm like halfway through it even though it's kind of useless to read it all in one go but and because i definitely to quote jenna marbles have the too much gene i am reading murder he wrote which is the life of donald bain the author of all of these books so i'm looking at like the stack of books on my bedside table right now and i'm also reading stephen king's it but i've been reading that for like two years that's another book i'm trying to finish i do actually like this one but his books are long and you like have to be in the mood and i just have not been in the mood <laughs> All right, I will see you guys in my next video. Hopefully my wedding video coming soon. I have not gotten it yet, but life's been a little bit crazy. So I am not expecting anything um, like as timely as normal. I understand everything's kind of in the air with things. So, but I'm excited to start writing and to use this opportunity to write because I feel like 
you know, as horrible as a lot of things are, life is all about adapting and really taking advantage of what we ha are given in the present moment. So I've been given a lot more free time and I really plan on using that. So whether you are, sorry, I'm checking, multitasking, answering emails. <laughs> so whether you are home, working remotely, home for other reasons, or you are still working because you work for the medical field or just a job that does not allow you to be home during this time, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're staying healthy or staying safe. Um, and of course, like everyone else, my heart goes out to those who do still have to work during this time most of my family is in that position my dad's a pilot which even though obviously that has cut back it is still a mandatory position um, my mom and brother both work at a hospital and just so there's just a lot of people in my life that unfortunately still have to put themselves out there but um hopefully by continuing to do the efforts that we are doing things will level out soon and we can try and find a new normal so that's my speech when it comes to that and let me know how you guys are doing and you know what feel free to reach out to me too like not just in the youtube comments but if you just want someone to talk to like i know there's a lot of people who are at home right now by themselves if you want someone to talk to message me on instagram message me on twitter um i think you can message me on youtube maybe i don't really know how that works but um i certainly am going to have a lot more free time and i'm going to be home the next few weeks so i would love to connect and talk to you guys um so yeah feel free to do that and i just hope you guys are all doing well and if you're not that's okay too i will see you guys in my next video bye and say bye to mona oh tragic story we went to the louvre to see the real Mona. We were gonna get a picture with her and they closed while we were like fifth in line. True story. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's actually really sad. We were so close, so close. But that's okay, health first, but so close. Bye guys. It is snowing a lot right now. I didn't even know it was supposed to snow today. I don't even really know what day it is. I think it's 2020.